Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Latherix. And of course, welcome back straight into a bit of action. We are currently going up against a plunderer and a red tuna. So this is going to be a bit of an awesome fight, honestly. The plunderer has been updated heavily since the old version, and now has advanced cannons, better armor, and a whole host of upgrades. So let's get into the battle and see how we do. Honestly, if the flat cannons can do their job quickly enough, we should be absolutely fine. Oh yeah, the flat cannons are absolutely mowing down the plunderer, no question about it. And that's the problem when you use mostly wood and little metal. However, it has been shooting back. How is the supply vessel doing? It's took some damage on the front, but not too much. And finally, the fireworks are now in the fight. The plunderer didn't stand a chance. Like I've said before, we are just mowing down the Deepwater Guard right now. I've beaten the Deepwater Guard, I think, six times now. About four of them actually on camera, and I think it's about time we just utterly obliterate them and move on to more interesting enemies. So we are not holding back, as was shown in that fight. The advanced cannons can be pretty darn amazing. Ooh, they did manage to take out one of the fireworks, though. There it goes into the water. Still, a pretty convincing victory from the supply vessel, though. Those flat cannons are amazing. Oh my lord, what did that just hit? What was that? It must have already been damaged and then took a hit and the entire front section just fell off. I'm going to assume... I'm going to assume that was probably one of our cruise missiles, unless... Does the plunderer have missiles that missed, or perhaps torpedoes? I actually don't know. Oh, by the looks of it, yeah, it was actually one of the cruise missiles. Just proving how powerful the fireworks missiles actually are there, taking out the entire front section of the supply vessel. And now into the building segment of the video. Although I didn't really want this episode to become a building episode, it's just kind of happened. We need to complete this fortress before we move on, otherwise I will never complete it because I know exactly what I'm like. So today we're going to be mostly focusing on the engine and the refinery area, as they are the main areas this fortress needs before it is considered complete. I also really don't want this thing to turn out quite as rectangular as it's currently looking, so I'm going to try and make it look a little bit different, though I'm not 100% sure how. So I'm going to mess around with a few basic shapes off the side here, until I figure out one I actually like. Most likely we're going to end up as a right angle and nothing else, but we'll see if we can make it look a little bit more creative, although don't count on it. With the very basic guideline shape now completed, we can start converting this space into the fortress of our dreams, starting off by building the engines, which will most likely, like I mentioned before, be in the form of silos, because for some reason I just think that sounds really, really cool. So I'm going to be attaching those to the wall over here, just so we can meld the wall to our needs to protect it, because really the engine is going to be one of the most explosive and most valuable parts of any fortress, so keeping it safe is the priority. Hence why I've kind of gone for the shape you see in front of you. We can heavily armour up the front, just like the fortress, while keeping everything open plan in the back. Now I really need to stop calling this area the fortress, and then calling everything the fortress. That is the fort, this is the fortress, okay? That makes sense to me, it makes no sense in real life because fort is a short for fortress, but even so, that's what we're going with. So, engines go over here, and then we're going to have a launch bay over here. Now, this is, is an idea I had off-camera after the last video. I really want a permanent aircraft to be docked in somewhere in the fortress, so that's going to be over here. Mostly because it also gives me an excuse to have a almost completely solid section here, which is going to be really difficult to get through, with the fortress being able to actually turn towards the enemy at any given time, that will make it very difficult to explode anything behind it, which is all going to be incredibly vulnerable. 
So with this, we're going to have a series of control blocks which will essentially control when the firework is released, or whichever aircraft we end up using. This way, we can send it off into battle whenever we see fit. If the enemy is nearby, well, it'll be sent off automatically, and once the enemy have been dealt with, it can come back and land once again completely by itself to get repairs until the next battle. It occurs to me, before we cut off to the actual build montage, that these two sections here, these two corners, would be perfect for a bit of resource storage, as the actual fort itself isn't really well designed for that, having three to four thick walls and having very limited space other than where the guns are and where the ammunition is, which is just underneath the main gun there. So perhaps we could convert these two areas using the extra armour we could very easily create by smoothing off this corner to have a load of storage, maybe even building a bit of a overhead walkway to make this passage look a little bit more, I don't know, look a bit, bit more natural, because at the moment it's just out in the open and looks a little bit weird honestly, like most of the fortress. Perhaps we can even do some prettying up while we build it, who knows. But regardless, let's get building. Now, before I do get into the building montage, I will just want to say I won't be doing these as often as I've been doing in the previous few episodes, although there have been a really high amount of people saying they like the new style, which I really appreciate by the way. Any feedback, always appreciated. I don't want to overdo it and become predictable, but this is just one of those very monotonous builds that suits it perfectly. And so, cue the music!
Well, there we are. That took a lot longer than expected. It seems like at the moment I'm still suffering through a bit of a plague of indecision. Every time I build something, I end up rebuilding it ten times before finally deciding upon a finished product. And even then, I'm still not happy with it. Perhaps I'm just getting better at building, but the problem is my building expectations is growing far faster than my actual skill level. But here we are regardless. Everything is completed to at least a functional extent. And by that I mean everything is working, it's just not pretty yet. Just like the main section of the fortress here, the weapons work, the weapons will gut anything in the Deepwater Guard, everything is nicely stored inside, it just looks horrendous in terms of turrets having no weapon caps, a lot of the things suddenly ending at nowhere, it just needs to be finished and all that I'll do off camera because it's going to be me looking at shapes and going, hmm, does this fit here? And then realising it freaking doesn't. So anyway, we have the engines, they are ridiculously efficient, every single engine is the engine I built a while back which gets over 300 fuel, so power per fuel spent, which is wonderful considering this platform will be producing its own fuel, so we don't really want an oil platform burning through the oil too fast. We then have a tiny little resource storage area, although this won't be the main storage area, I think it looks pretty nice. It looks a bit like an office, but I'm sure once it's all prettied up I can make it look a bit more warehouse. Esque. And if not, I'll just simply have these two sections here open, which are actually currently storing the bulk of the resources of this fortress. We then finally have the AI and the basic runway set up for a single firework. I massively underjudged how big a firework actually is. I keep forgetting, I didn't build the small vehicle straight away, which I normally do. Instead, I went straight away for quite a powerful build, which is the very basic wooden firework, which you see here. This is the version which I started off with, not the updated version which I'm currently fighting with, just because it is a little bit smaller, the other one's even bigger than that. If I ever do build a bigger flying vehicle, which of course I haven't yet, then I'm sure we'll need to extend the... Uh, runway, I guess it would be. Is it a runway? It's not really a runway being so small. Like I say, it's a launching platform, I suppose. But there we have it, and that's all I'm going to build today. We'll finish this some other time, and honestly, at this point, most of it's going to be done off camera, so people who dislike the speed-up segments, don't worry, that's not going to happen for at least the rest of the episode. But for now... I feel like I need to kill something. I have been sitting here and building for so long, I just want to do some more fighting. After we dealt with the plunderer so easily, I think it's only fair we go ahead and do that. Oh, hello. This is something new. Okay, I was just in the settings here because I've actually replaced the stone on the fortress due to the glare it was giving. So I was perhaps looking for a glare modifier or a gamma modifier. I don't know, just something built in so I could skimp on editing. But have a look at this. Experience gain multiplier, 481%. Is that because of our current stats? Yes, it is. If we lower the difficulty... It takes away some of the experience we're getting. That explains why I leveled up so much earlier. I don't know if that's new. The actual gain multiplier wording here is new, but I don't know if this is a new concept. Did you always get more experience from more difficulty? I actually don't know, but that's really cool. A bit more of a bonus for doing the harder modes, I suppose, even though at the moment I'm like level 400, which is more than you'll ever sodding need. But still... Pretty cool, so if you ever want to, want to try playing the game on a more difficult mode, you'll get higher level faster to make you better at fighting the difficult mode, even though some of the perks aren't particularly good right now. Okay, that was just a little bonus something something. Let's get into a battle. Naturally, the enemy we face before hitting the next resource zone is the Flying Squirrel. I guess this what happens when you have godly difficulty designs and a simple level 10 tile. You get a single Flying Squirrel angrily flying at you. I wonder if it'll actually take out any of our fireworks. It has done really well in the past against them, so we'll see. Where is it? There it is. Oh, it was spawned in the water! Did that? No, we didn't actually get a hit. Even with it spawning in the water, all of our shots missed. Oh, one of the flak shots did actually manage to just clip it. If it oh, again with the flak. The flak proving itself time and time again, even against things like the flying squirrel. It looks really damaged. How is that still flying? Come on. Something hit it, please. 
Ramming it works too, actually. Ramming's absolutely fine. Do that again. The coffin L trying to be accurate there. Oh, please don't hit our fireworks, flat cannon. I think the flat cannon may be reloading. Definitely not using it. Oop, I have actually, there it is. I actually lost where it went then. The flying squirrel proving too much for the Lathrixian fleet. The amount of times I've downed this thing and then occasionally this just happens. Oh, there we go. I think we took out its tail. There we are. I think every single bit of damage was either being rammed or the flat cannon. I hate those things. So much. Finally, here we are at the resource zone, and to make things a little bit interesting, and to do a little bit of science, we are only going to be sending in the coffee nail. Not only is Deepwater Guard versus Deepwater Guard combat highly satisfying, but also I want to test out, is wood really that bad at the moment? As every time we've come across a wooden enemy, we have simply obliterated it from existence, and that's with quite weak weapons. The flat cannon on the supply vessel, although it is quite powerful, doesn't really do that much damage. It's not intended to be against ships, it's only to be intended to be used against flyers, very fast moving opponents where the area of effect does its work so it can hit the flyers even if it misses. The actual damage per shot is quite low, but even with that, we have been simply eradicating the enemies from existence. And as a result, it's time to do a little bit of science. I will also be turning off my repair just for this, okay, and turn on weapons now. Oh, the missile's gone, so is the regular weapons. Let's see then. Yeah, look at that, absolutely eradicated the top section there. The custom cannons definitely don't do as well as its advanced cannons, but even then, they are just removing the wooden beams every single hit. Even the non-explosive rounds only take two shots. So it seems like armor has been improved significantly in the recent patch, making metal really, really good, and making wood almost worthless to use. Maybe next time I should actually increase the difficulty a little bit, just on the difficulty modifier here, so that we do less damage per shot, so I can see exactly how it functions. But even so, we'll do that in the future in a science episode, maybe, or perhaps just off camera. Well done, Coffee Nail, it really wasn't much of a competition, but even so, you have claimed one more resource zone for us, even if it's not a fantastic one. Good for metal, good for natural, but since it uses no oil, it will be quite a high up keep sort of um, resource zone as we'll have to keep on ferrying oil back and forth to make sure it doesn't simply explode. But with that, I'm afraid I'm all out of time for today's recording. I intended to only play for about one, maybe two hours, but with the building taking so long, this has took me over five. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that from the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Next time we will continue our push to the east and maybe I'll reveal a bit of a secret to you all.